But, interestingly enough, in the next ML document file with the NRC Freedom of Information Act, I come across just incredible, just incredible stuff. And, and the bottom line is that, uh, well, look, here, let me, uh, they're talking about the Navy ships and the ANCs and the doses and measurements and these samples they've had. And, and if you look at just right now, just quickly looking here, see all this dark stuff? That's all they're starting to redact now around this, the angst around the naval ship, samples moving them, plume, offshore plumes. And look at this one real quick. Let me bring it up. I got this one labeled as chronic situation. And it's between two big redacted parts, but uh, the guy's saying the fact is this is a chronic situation. It's going to last over a period of time. There's uncertainty associated with what the levels will be. And they already said something about three or four different plumes at different times. So, man, they, they had every reason to get the ships out of there. Every reason! All right, well, anyway, psh, 2 to 4 p.m. We'll talk about it and uh, go over some other, maybe some other relevant stuff as far as the media suppression of all uh, this blockbuster information, right? All right, Hattrick Penry, over and out. Okay, welcome to Hattrick Penry Unbound. This is your host, Hattrick Penry. And isn't it amazing how the velocity on your snare drum can just change magically of its own accord from just 20 minutes ago when I mixed it down and uploaded it, and, and I tell you, something very strange is going on. <laughs> okay, so that is my song, Rest Your Head, and, and I'm still it's in progress because I, I'm have, having problems with the... Cubase, the software, is doing something strange there, is all I can say. <clears throat> okay, it's the 25th of January, 2013, and we are going to examine some Plume Gate, some NRC Freedom of Information Act documents today, some new documents. And to bring you up to speed on that real quick, while I've just mentioned it, uh, this is a new batch that's come out since Obama was re-elected. Okay, and I don't like die bold, de bold electronic voting machines any more than anybody else, and I don't like foreign countries counting our votes, nor all the other shenanigans too many to list. But nevertheless, he is our president, and coincidentally, these are released not long after he's attained office for a second term. Now, interestingly enough, the previous documents centered a lot around what was going to happen to us, the children's thyroid doses in California and and other segments like that. Uh, these, as I'm uh, looking into the, the section that I have uh, that I'm uh, uh, examining, seems to be a lot about these Navy ships and and the radiation um, around Japan at the time of the, the incident. And that's kind of critical right now, being that there's some sailors suing TEPCO in Japan, is my understanding. I'm, I don't know a whole lot about the case, but I've seen a couple articles in relation to that. Well, interestingly enough, we may have some indication that our side knew a, a lot more than they're telling us and didn't do the right thing, which would be to just, you know, in my opinion anyway, if I was present, to err on the side of caution, you know, move our, our vessels, Navy vessels, civilian vessels, anything upwind and out of the way. And as, as severe as it looked early on, you, in my opinion, again, I would even begin to move troops off of Japan. Japan's kind of a doomed island if you think about it, and I would go ahead and begin removing troops in a, in a you know, calm and rational uh, manner. But that did not happen, and some of the information we'll see again today, which is relating to the Navy ships. And the, remember last time we talked about the angst they were going to suffer some guys in the NRC if they ran the worst case scenario, well, it looked like they need to move ships and get the ships out of there. So he says it's probably best not to run the worst case if you have angst about moving Navy ships. The guy says, yeah, that's what we were thinking too. So you can clearly see they're avoiding, and when they do run a worst case, well, you see there's other people come in with variations of a worst case scenario and they downplay that. And again, that's what I see uh, today in this information here. It's like they've had a sample Someone's had a sample, and it's high, and they're concerned, and an admiral's involved, maybe two. I think there's another admiral in the previous documents. This is uh, Admiral Donald, and they're, they're called in, and there's a lot of heavy redaction. Again, why? I don't know, because this isn't really military secrets we're talking about here at all. We're not talking about details about the plant, per se. This discussion centers around radiation readings, radiation findings, radiation measurement in and around Japan, Fukushima area, uh, uh, prior or, or after 
post Fukushima meltdown. Okay, it just makes sense. And they talk about plume after plume after plume, multiple plumes, chronic condition, high radiation, and then, and in some places you see. And there's particular characters who I'm going to begin to uh, build a dossier on and say, yeah, these are the ones that are downplaying everything because there's particular characters that always seem to have a, a, a sample or a, or a calculation uh, or some kind of a measurement they come to that's much nicer than the others and things don't look so bad. And, hey, look, my calculation, you don't have to move Navy ships around. Look at what I got, you know. Meanwhile, the other one says, hey, worst case, I don't want to run. I'm angst. They'd have to move these. They didn't say they'd have to move the ships, but the angst is over the possibility of moving ships. So one can only conclude logically that in that worst case scenario, it would have called for the rational, proper response, move the ships, move them upwind. You know, sail them all the way around the side of the world and come up on the East Coast if you have to. That's what I would have done as president. And just to, again, now why didn't they? Well, clearly it's to protect the nuclear industry. Clearly, 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 clearly. I agree you don't want to raise panic and undue alarm. That's why you give sensible warnings and a, a rational response. You don't hide things from people. And then when later we have some uh, rash of cancers, okay, and again, I challenge anyone to, you know, CDC, again, while I'm on this, let me briefly talk about uh, President Obama has called for, again, I use the term president loosely, President Obama has called for some kind of gun violence research by the CDC. It's part of his new plan. They're going to give him money or whatever. We need you to research gun violence, blah, 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 blah. But I've looked around and been unable to find any recent cancer statistics, certainly not since Fukushima the catastrophe at Fukushima, and no one has yet to provide them for me or give me a link, and I've looked all around. What I find is studies that are done up to 2009, and they'll rehash that, and then they'll publish it again in 2011 and 2012, but that's not recent studies. In fact, it's worrisome. It's damned concerning, actually. I don't know about for you, but for me, as a matter of national security, that this administration, the CDC, is not looking into that. Don't you think so? Don't you think that's kind of uh, dangerous and, and unsecure for the nation for our health? Certainly, I certainly would. If I was president again, I would run a study. I, who cares about a second term? You know, I'm trying to save people lives. If they run a study, if the cancer rates are going up, we're going to have to come to some kind of countermeasures and try to do everything we can. But that didn't happen. No rainwater warnings, no green leafy vegetable warnings. Hey, you got to go and ask like my mom does when she's down shopping. She actually asked them in the produce section, where does this come from? Where does this come from? And they know, she says, but you have to ask them. And some ask why. <clears throat> she's asking. She tells them Fukushima radiation. I don't want something from California. Certain things from California aren't so safe to eat right now. Okay, if you're eating sushi, you're down at your Japanese sushi house. Might not be <laughs> And people are still eating seafood out of the Gulf, like no crux, it's been sprayed and nothing's happened out there. So it's up to you to uh, keep abreast of what's going on and keep yourself safe. No, the, this government certainly is not going to do it for you. France did, France did, United Kingdom did, Taiwan did, other countries did, but not our government. Not the most advanced nation in the world. Wow, that's really kind of crazy to me. I, I, it's hard for me to believe. So I wanted to, again, mention that while Obama is going to call for a gun violence study by CDC, the Center for Disease Control, there's no such study been put forth uh, in the realm of a cancer study, thyroid or what have you, uh, post-Fukushima. It makes all common rational sense. I will chip in a little bit extra tax money, not that I have a job, right, but you know, I know people that do, and other people out there have jobs. I'm sure you guys would contribute to have a cancer study so we can know if there's an alarming rate of cancers increasing cancer, right? But I think we all know why that study is not going to be done. Don't look for it to be done, because if such an increase in cancer does happen and people are alerted to it and find out where it's coming from and find out what happened about this massive multi-agency cover-up I call Plume Gate, I mean, it's huge. I could rattle off all the agencies again if you want to. I mean, it's almost, you know, it's almost become like a little rap song for me if I have to go through it. But it's six, seven, eight agencies, White House, GE, Bechtel, corporations involved. It's huge to be able to suppress this. So you can't do a cancer study thereafter because that would alert people, hey, they, we really did get hit over here. Hey, why didn't you tell us about the plume? Why is so much redacted? Why all this redaction, right? <laughs> I have to laugh at it sometimes. It's Friday, too, and I'm only going to take it so seriously because tomorrow is, again, my taco day. 
You can be using my tacos from tacorack.com. I don't do advertising and I don't take money, but I do occasionally product evaluation, and that's what I did for Nicholas was tested out as taco racks. And yes, they uh, simplicity is beauty. I'll put it that way, and they work flawlessly. Right. Also, if, you know, if Hamer Guitars wanted to send me a 12-string Hamer guitar with EMG active pickups, or just send me the pickups, I'll put them in myself. Right. EMG could send me some pickups. I'll evaluate your active pickups for my 12-string bass. That I will offer to do out of my own free uh, time and, uh, and my own volition, right? Okay. I want to make a quick uh, bit of a correction, but I kind of already did. I just want to go back and revisit and make sure people are clear on these Bechtel pumps. But I did miss part of the Bechtel pump story, and that is the fact that I'm being told, and this is from another Plumgate researcher, very reliable, there's evidence in the documents that the pumps were just going to be given for free. They were coming out of Australia, Perth, Australia. And there's evidence they were just going to go ahead and give them the pumps. Hey, just take them, right? But then something finagling went on in there, and the next thing you know, Department of Defense is going to foot the bill. Well, that's John Q. Taxpayer, to my knowledge, right? The DOD, their money comes from John Q. Taxpayer. So it, it looks like in the end, instead of them being given for free, which was an option, Someone said, hey, let's just charge John Q. Taxpayer the $9.8 billion, I believe it is, $9.8 billion. At first I said million on an earlier broadcast. No, 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 that was, that was totally incorrect. Billion, billion, B, 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 because at some point they say 10B, meaning $10 billion. Well, it's close to that, $9.8 billion. So why is our budget in a, a total catastrophic downfall? Well, where's our money going? Who's If they would have given it for free... And earlier figures, I tell you, in these documents, were in the hundreds of thousands. Then all of a sudden, the number jumps up to this insanely high level. Well, I mean, if you got multiple meltdowns, you don't really have a choice. If the only pumps in the world come out of Australia, they're going to give you long-term, reliable pumping. Like I say, the concrete trucks wouldn't do it. They said, look, these might work temporarily. They're not that effective, and they're not going to last for a year. They're not going to last for months and months. They're not meant for steady, uh, non-stop uh, uh, pumping. So, with the Bechtel pumps, I just wanted to make sure we're all clear on that. They're super expensive, $9.8 billion. The, it seems like the information I'm being given is the option was put forth that they could just have them for free, because there's some arguing and dickering about that, and then it looks like the company just said, hey, take them. They were going to send a couple technicians. They wouldn't go down to the Fukushima Daiichi facility. They said, well, if you have an off-site location, We'll show you about the pumps there and tell you how to hook them up there, but we're not going down to the Fukushima location, period. Those technicians are no fools. They already knew. They already knew. So instead of free, no, DOD, it, it looks at, by all appearances, is bilking John Q. Taxpayer for $9.8 freaking billion dollars. Okay, I got a homeless guy named Ed. Lives on 13th Street in Gainesville, Florida, an old house, right? And sometimes out in the woods when they run him out of the old house or whatever. And $9.8 billion, Ed doesn't even need but a tiny, 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 tiny slice of that, right? You give him 5000 bucks and get him in a, a room. He, the guy just doesn't look. He can walk around, pedal a bicycle, need some new clothes, a shave. He used to do dairy farming. Get him a job on a dairy farm. That $9.8 billion, wow, wow. Think how many 12-string Hamer guitars I could have bass guitars with EMG pickups I could have for $9.8 billion. Hospitals, for that freaking matter, right? Schools. Armed guards at schools if it's going to get all crazy with the MK Ultra shooters like that, you know. Okay. And, oh, also, again, I'm still, we're not even into the documents yet. I'm still covering some things I wanted to make sure I did cover today. I had a screen capture from part of the documents that discussed the possibility of spent fuel pool number four on unit four having a melt core meltdown through the concrete three or four feet of concrete down through that onto the torus and through the torus of the nuclear reactor. That's the big round thing <clears throat> underneath the spent fuel pool. And then it would go on down into the ground as we're hearing that cracks have opened up and steam's coming out of them. And, and by all appearances, it really did because days and days have gone by, no water. And they even say that in the documents. You know, that document, that screen capture, I tried to upload to my WordPress uncovering plume gate. All the others went through. That one, it didn't let go through. It showed the square, but with a red X in it. And so I tried it a couple of times. didn't work. I came back, re-screen captured it. Oh, okay. Then finally it uploaded it, but not for long. It booted that one off too. I was like, what's going on here? The third time appears to be a charm. I did it again, re-upload it. Now, 
that same screen capture, the original one I tried to upload to Facebook yesterday, no, it said uh, er image error or something like that, wouldn't let me upload it either. Now, my point being, I come to a blog talk radio, and I got to give them props because on my uh, the post today, you'll see it's one of the screen captures rolling through, and Blog Talk let me put it right up with no interference at all. In fact, Blog Talk lets me say what I want as long as I'm not promoting violence, which I abhor. I'm a total pacifist until you back me into a corner, right? Then I'm like what the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, didn't he say a, a, a an old tiger when when backed in a corner, sensing the end is near, is at his most uh, fierce. That's what he says. An old tiger sensing the end is near is at his most fierce. Right? Okay, that's how I am. But until that little last tiny little bit where I have no choice, total pacifism. So I'm, you know, blog talk lets me do that, and I can say anything I want. I can hypothesize. I can have opinions. I can have, you know, crazy, uh, uh, far out conjecture. Whatever. Whatever. So, so far, I, I kind of like blog talk. I got my mic set up. You can hear my voice a lot better. I'm, I'm very happy with it, very happy with it. And I can see they're fixing their little glitches and errors as time goes on, too, so they're perfecting as well. It's like purpleplanet.com music. It's an online public domain, and there's a guy, Joff, that works there, and they've got a whole huge uh, uh, section of music by mood and mystery and horror and sad and happy and all sort of stuff like that. Great for YouTube videos. So there's some good stuff going on out there in a small way. In a bigger way, not so much. Okay, uh, that's covered what I wanted to cover. And now let's look. I posted up a link to Uncovering Plume Gate so you too can look at the documents. But you don't have to because these are pretty simple. There's some technical terms as they're sampling uh, levels of radiation. Again, iodine, and we're going to talk about today the fact that all we hear is about iodine, right? Maybe cesium, maybe cesium, and that's it. That's it. You haven't heard, you've heard me mention MOX fuel, but like once I found one place in these documents where they slipped up and let the MOX fuel through. And there's a problem because around the planet it was sloshed around down on the ground or something that contaminated with MOX fuel sludge, they called it on the ground. So, Okay, the first couple screen captures, I don't have any real information on them per se, but it does show that the uh, March 21st is the date we're looking at. This is NRC official transcripts. Let me close the door. Sounds like my wife is home. I hear dishes clanking in there. Okay, so the date, March 21, 2011. This is a Fukushima Daiichi ET executive team audio file. Work order NRC 1100. Next screen capture, just to, again, show you the date. I wanted to make sure that was there. Uh, okay, here we are on the third screen capture, page two of these public uh, documents available. You can go to the NRC website, and there's a whole stash of them there, and there's a Atom system you can look through with just mounds and mounds. Again, it's, it's a lot to go through, a lot. Okay, and, and you'll see in these some heavy redaction, and it's a new improved NRC redaction. It's a nice, neat square uh, with a, a nice uh, a gray kind of uh, background, even gray background. Not the harsh black we've been used to. Now they're easing up. They've advanced forward. They're going to be a little easier on our eyes, and it's a nice light gray, right? If this continues on in another thousand years, maybe it'll just be clear and we can see everything, right? Again, are we discussing military secrets? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Are we discussing some kind of superior design of uh, a technology that we don't want others to have access to unduly? N not that I'm aware of. This is Mark One Containment. Nobody wants that anymore. Nobody really does want that. I, not No sane person does anyway. Arnie Gundershield might, but no sane person does. A sane person who examines the Mark One Containment, all of them should be shut down. Every single one. A, set, those are the first ones will shut down, right? Not if. Let's just get into our mind and start thinking about it, right? When we start shutting down all the nuclear plants, well, a lot of jobs will be safe jobs. We know how to be safe with and handle it safely as we systematically shut them down, releasing new technologies that have been suppressed, et cetera. Okay, first screen capture. We don't even get to see who this is uh, speaking at this part because there's names redacted. Again, what kind of energy is this? Nuclear power. Are people proud to have their names associated with nuclear power? No. <laughs> no, they're just not. They're not. You know, if you're helping old ladies across the street and you work at a, a hospital for poor people and indigent people, well, then you're probably proud to say, hey, I, I rehabilitate uh, at an old folks' home. I do rehab for old folks. My name is, you know, Patrick Penry. 
I'm proud of it. But in here, no, redaction on the names, folks. Well, I don't want to be associated with it. But I'll work for you, but you keep my name out of it, please. It's nuclear power. It's like grave robbing. That's what I compare it to. You don't want people to know you're a grave robber. It may be a way to earn a living, but you don't go around advertising it after Fukushima. Okay, redaction, redaction, redaction. Reactors. We have your NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, folks in Tokyo. We have Steve Aoki, A-O-K-I, from DOE, Department of Energy, NNSA. We are talking about doses that the Navy has measured. Let me write down real quick that NNSA and see if I can. I've got a section on uncovering plume gate with the anacronyms and some definitions in there. I'll look that up if I get a chance here and think about it. We are talking about doses that the Navy has measured, dose rate concentrations, actually, that the Navy has measured. We're on the USS George Washington in Atsugi, A-T-S-U-G-I. Big block of redaction after that. Redacted, redacted. Conference, could you please mute? Male participant. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Again, this looks like a name redacted here in this section. Name redaction. So I was just explaining to the new arrivals that on the George Washington, you've gotten particulate levels of 1 to 2 times 10 to the ninth microcuries per milliliter. At another location north of Tokyo, you had a sample that showed 10 to the negative 7th microcuries per milliliter of presumably iodine. Now, before I go any further, let's examine this two things. Number one, we're talking about the George Washington now. It's not even the USS Ronald Reagan or whatever the other one is. We're beginning to see multiple naval vessels that have gotten particulate levels. Those ships are actually able to test to some small degree, and for iodine, maybe what it is. But the fact of the matter is, it's always iodine. And if these ships tested iodine of any levels, okay, then perhaps, perhaps, there were other radiological isotopes present as well, ones that they were either neither able to or just simply did not test for, or if they did, it was suppressed and we never got to find out about it. Clearly, throughout these Freedom of Information documents, uh, and I've been very clear about this, it's cesium iodine, cesium iodine. I've got a bit of a, a cartoon, if that's what you want to call it. It's got Arnie Gunderson's picture on it, and it's got a little caption bubble. It says cesium iodine, cesium iodine, cesium iodine, cesium iodine, cesium iodine, plutonium, question mark. And it goes back and says cesium iodine, cesium iodine, cesium iodine. Because that's what you get out of all these guys that are protecting the nuclear industry. They don't want to discuss the fact, and they don't want to belabor upon it or, or showcase it or highlight it. Number three was MOX fuel. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's pretty public information. Everybody who looks into this knows about it. The plutonium-uranium mix. Plutonium is what? The most deadly substance known to man. Right, I hear it's probably more horrible, uh, painful, quicker way to die by the box jellyfish from Australia, okay? I don't want to get hit by a box jellyfish in Australia either. But nuclear power is, is kind of like a box jellyfish, invisible, floating through the air. But cancer's slow and drawn out, right? Box jellyfish, <laughs> it's the most poisonous animal on the face of the earth. It'll kill you. Quick. You don't have to. You suffer, but not for long. That's the thing. Okay, so we see that multiple... Navy vessels now are being named in these documents. They didn't redact that out. They let us know that. Some of the measurements, I've been clear on this, if you look at uh, previous broadcasts and documents we've looked through, the rooftop grab information is kind of bogus in that there's information leading us to believe that the rooftop grabs could have been higher, but they sent it to the, and first of all, they know FOIA Freedom of Information is kicking in. They all know they're being recorded. But the information would be given in a brief to the nuclear plant workers would be one set of information. And then, then what it looks like to me, in any case, is that another set of information, perhaps the genuine rooftop grabs, which might have been a little more serious, were sent up the chain of command, NEI, National Energy Institute, which kind of works hand in hand with all. I should name them in the conspiracy, too. They had a password database where all these rooftop grabs from our nuclear plants here in the States were being accumulated, and they were secreted away. We weren't really allowed access to them. Now, they know we're going to look through these documents. So I tell you, what they don't redact is there are people who are in place to downplay, to move a decimal place one or two places, and that, that's, that's big. When you move a decimal place or you play with the numbers, right, fuzzy math, George W. Bush, right, when you play with these numbers, you can you can take something that looks horrible and, and change it. And here he says that's by a factor of 100 different, right, in these documents right here. And, yes, 
The lady comes in with a much nicer, and, and as we looked last time, the guy says, almost as if we're trying to influence them. Yes, they're trying to influence. And again, there's public information in the private. The press release and then the for the industry professionals on the side information. Talking points, question and answers, very tightly controlled. They're watching media to see what we're talking about. Oh, they know everything Patrick Penry talks about. By the way, hi, guys. How you guys doing? You need to shut them all down as soon as we can. You're crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're watching media to see what we're, what few of us are trying to expose these crimes, right? It's really a crime against humanity when you look at nuclear power. And furthermore, they've stationed these dirty bombs all over the planet. What is a nuclear plant? Hey, it's a bomb waiting to go off of what it looks like to me. I mean, call me crazy, okay, but I, I prefer the sunlight. It's been following the planet for a long time, never screwed it up, right? Okay, not, let me not get sidetracked, as I have. George Washington, now we got multiple naval vessels picking up uh, radi radiation, and to be clear, we're not talking plutonium, uranium, americanium, or whatever other these crazy substances are released in a meltdown, which we know there was three meltdowns. It looks all indications spent fuel pool four, four melted right through the floor, went down to the torus. That's the one screen cap that I keep getting booted off all over the place, right? So now we're getting a little better idea what's going on with our men and women, our brothers and sisters in the Navy, in the Army or Air Force, whoever stationed over there at the time. Again, right now, I could clearly say in my opinion, in my opinion, I would have had a mass evacuation. Okay, I would have said, screw the nuclear power industry, we'll release suppressed tech, we'll give them the solar panels they never had, we begin to shut them down, this is it, it's over, this is the third, the final straw, just get our, just to protect them, please, because it's MOX fuel, plutonium, and you know what I'm being told now is that in number four, uh, reactor number four, they were preparing to load and use MOX fuel. So we have indications that MOX fuel might have been in the spent fuel pool because new unused rods are placed in that pool, and, and I'm told to some degree it kind of gets them warmed up. Let's just phrase it that way. They're in there with the other hot stuff, and it helps get the reaction started and everything. So they, they dip them in there a while before they put them in the reactor and actually use them. So we have indication that MOX fuel may have been in both number three and number four in the spent fuel pool. That's why such heavy redaction around that spent <laughs> fuel pool number four. Again, is this military secrets? Nah. Is it technology anyone wants to steal? Not that I'm, hey, you're a darn fool if you want to build a nuclear plant is all I got to say. And it's not technical details like that. We're talking about plume locations and levels of radiation, that kind of thing. We're not talking intimate details about design uh, uh, schematics and that kind of thing, right? Okay, to be clear. Male participant. Uh, he says, okay, sorry, thank you. He's telling, could, could you please mute or something? Got something playing in the background. Okay, sorry, thank you. Name redacted. So I was just explaining to the new arrivals that on the George Washington, you've gotten particulate levels of 1 to 2 times 10 to the 9th microcuries per milliliter. At another location north of Tokyo, you had a sample that showed 10 to the negative 7th microcuries per milliliter of presumably iodine. Male participant. Right, that sample north of Tokyo... That was specifically for radio iodine. It looks like a redacted uh, name. And this next guy that's redacted says, Admiral Donald, we're waiting to get some more of your technical folks on. Is that correct? Admiral Donald, that's correct. Mr. Burroughs, Admiral Donald, this is Chuck Burroughs. I have joined the conference call. Admiral Donald, okay. Name redacted. Admiral Donald, I believe your folks are in the conference at this time. Admiral Donald, okay, Mr. Burroughs, why don't you go ahead and uh, redact it, and the rest of the conference, at least what we know right now as far as the sampling is concerned, both on the George Washington and what we had north of Tokyo and anything else you can add based on discussion with Mr. Muir, phonetic, M-U-I-R, They don't. that's not necessarily the correct name or how it's spelled. And this little section here I thought was interesting because I read it back through a couple of times. It almost looks like what fits in that redacted section is if you think about it this way, if he tells the guy, why don't you go ahead and keep quiet about this information and the rest of the conference, at least what we know right now as far as the sampling is concerned, both on the George Washington and what we had north of Tokyo. That's about the only thing that fits in there. I kind of played it through a few times. Kind of like that Mad Libs from back in the day where you would fill in the verb or the adjective or whatever and read it back and get yourself a good laugh. Well, in this one, you can kind of do that, too, and kind of fit, well, what fits in there? What kind of makes sense? And that kind of does. And it seems in this 
document as in the last one, but even more so in this one. They're very concerned. They're very concerned about these levels that they're picking up. Are, are they going to give us the, the bad readings, the, the worst of the worst? No, that's going to be redacted. And the very least of the worst, the people they have in place to downplay these things, to move a decimal place, as I've told you, make it a factor of 100 different, they're in place. And those... They will let you see. That is to throw us off. They know we're going to watch the FOIA documents. They know all about it. They're clear. In the, they even warn each other in the documents, you know, about the FOIA documents, and they're being recorded. Okay, next screen capture. Mr. Burroughs. Yes, sir. First, the data in a distance 90 miles from the plant, which is north of Tokyo. Beginning at 2035, our local time here, Eastern Daylight Time, readings in excess of 1 times 10 to the negative ninth microcuries per milliliter of particulate radioactivity were identified. The first reading was 7 times 10 to the negative ninth, and there have been repetitive readings roughly at 15-minute intervals in 1 times 10 to the negative ninth to 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth range. And you don't have to be an expert to just kind of see it. The number is 1 to 3.5. That's the, that's the increase. And the other one was 7 times 10 uh, to the negative ninth. So we're seeing varying levels here. And the 7 by 10 to the ninth seems to be obviously higher than the others. But let's continue to examine these. Let's not get too caught up in the technicalities of these numbers. We need to uh, be sure we're clear on this simple fact. Low doses of radiation, they're bad, okay? I'm going to tell you like Mr. Mackey from South Park. They're bad. It's just bad. It's plain and simple. I know there's natural radiation exists in the environment, so on and so forth, but the plutonium and, and cesium and iodine, this stuff's not natural in that form, at that level, floating around in the air. Like It's just not. I know that much about it to know that it's not. So what we need to be concerned here with and keep in mind is our naval vessels, among other flyovers they're doing, uh, information with TEPCO, although TEPCO's not entirely accurate, I'm sure they're telling them more than we all got told, right? So there's plenty of indications. Say, hey, they're testing for it, and they're finding it. They're finding it. Low levels, if that's what they want to tell us, it's low levels, fine. But I can look and poke at, at one particular uh, 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 worry, worrisome fact, and that is that there's very little to, I haven't seen the word plutonium, I'll put it that way. I've seen Mox Fuel one, maybe two times in all the documents I've read. So they're very tight-lipped on the Mox Fuel uh, uh, scenario. And that's a fact. It's just an unavoidable fact that we know that Unit 3, the worst hit, had Mox Fuel in it. We know number three had emanations days later on the 14th. There is an explosion. Then after that, a quote-unquote lube oil fire that they say clearly it's not a lube oil fire. Something else happened there and some emanation smoke and some radiation came out. You can see the plume models I've shown you from the FOIA documents. I've posted up videos and it's all over the place. So we can even see plume models I got from TEPCO uh, on the 21st, 22nd. Even that many days later, 10, 11 days later, there's still plumes coming out of there of a, of a level enough they're testing for it. And you can see these plume models. You can see that it's like a, a, a cloud outline of a cloud of smoke drifting off in one direction if you see them. Okay, so the numbers, let's not get caught up in it. They're testing radiation all over the place in some at some level but only iodine or sometimes cesium, never the other big ones. And the independent scientists, might I remind you, they do, they do uh, test for all of them. They search and test for all, as many as they can, if they're going to do a proper job, because there's a whole lot, some short-lived, some long-lived. But, hey, check it across the board if you're going to be honest. You're going to be honest. First reading was 7 times 10 to the negative ninth. There have been repetitive readings. goes on to say that the, that first reading was the highest. And the reading stabilized out at 15-minute intervals in the 1.5, 1.0, 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth range. They're continuing to this point at 15 minutes after midnight. That is a very consistent set of particulate radioactivity results. We have two radioiodine results. These results were obtained by a radioiodine sampling kit that is based on a silver gel cartridge. The minimum that is based on a silver gel cartridge. The minimum detectable level, female participant. Mr. Smith, are you there still? Mr. Smith, affirmative. Mr. Burroughs, the minimum detectable level of this technology is on the order of 1 times 10 to the ninth microcuries per milliliter for radioiodine. It's got a minimum detectable level that is much higher then the minimum detectable level for particulate readings. I should stop here and, and, and go back and stress that. 
this system, silver gel cartridge, what I'm gathering from this, what I'm comprehending from this, is its minimum detectable level is much higher than the minimum detectable level for particulate readings. So there may be a variation. If this thing detects it and it's at its minimum, that could be a lot worse than another device that's minimum level detects it much uh, uh, earlier than that, if you will. Just trying to keep that. To what degree the variation there, I don't know. We're going to find out as we go through these documents. We're all going to be experts in this if cancer doesn't kill us first, right? And I, I do intend to get into these numbers. I've got all the books here. Let me brush back up and, and let me and let me find out what this is all about so I can kind of give you in terms of uh, REMS and the Protective Action Guideline. And we have some evidence of that in here. That's five REM per year is the EPA a guideline. If you work at a nuclear plant, you get five REM per year, and you're pregnant, they, they send you home. Okay, so that's what you want to keep in mind. And they, there is some discussion of that in here. And we have evidence of 35 REM to children in Alaska. I mean, it's some crazy stuff. This is all coming up in the next a month or so. We're going to get to all of this. It says, one, uh, one reading was obtained at a level of 1.6 times 10 to the negative seventh microcurious per milliliter for radioiodine. That reading is barely detectable, meaning that the limit of deductibility is about 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And this reading was 1.6 times 10 to the seventh. We're talking male participant. That should be way above detectable, Mr. Burroughs. Not for this technology. For radioiodine sampling, the limit of deductibility is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, male participant. 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. You said 1 times 10 to the negative 9th, Mr. Burroughs. Yes, I misspoke for the radioiodine measurement. The particulate measurements, not the radioiodine measurements, that minimum detectable level is in the 10 to the negative 10th, 10 to the negative 9th microcuries per milliliter range. Easily detectable particulate, not easily detectable by radioiodine. So the radioiodine reading here was in raw measurements was 50 counts on a frisker. Now I'm gathering a frisker is like some kind of handheld uh, um, Geiger counter type meter device. It was 50 counts on a frisker, 50 counts per minute on a frisker. You get the idea how low it was in the detection range. That equates to 1.6 times 10 to the negative seventh. A backup sample was taken some number of minutes later at 2245, that's the time, 2245, and it was not distinguishable from background. So that's the data we have. Now we also have surface contamination and gamma radiation measurements at 15 minute intervals from the same location. The gamma radiation measurements have been fluctuating from 0.01 millirem per hour to 0.06 millirem per hour. Male participant, could you run that bias once again? Mr. Burroughs, yes. There's a gamma radiation measurements being taken at this location, and they are fluctuating from 0.01 millirem per hour to 0.06 millirem per hour. Male participant, that's pretty low. Again, we get to see all the low measurements, and, and coincidentally enough, there's no, no high measurements in here to speak of that I'm aware. I haven't come across anyone that's really mind-blowingly high, something I can point out and say, wow, we got them right here. So they're very careful, again, to release the low stuff they talk about. They don't redact it. They don't redact it. Male participant, that's pretty low, and why it wasn't redacted. Mr. Burroughs, right. We also have surface contamination measurements that were detected at that location, and they are all roughly around 5,000 picocuries per 100 centimeters squared. So what is unusual about this data is the ratio of the radioiodine measurement, the detected result, and the particulate results. The ratio seems out of balance. In other words, between the detected result and the particulate results, they're having some discrepancy. One is much higher than the other. The ratio seems out of balance, uh, Mr. Burroughs goes on to say. We would expect radioiodine results and particulate results to be more similar in magnitude. He said they should be more equal. Male participant, right. Now keep in mind also I should, and this is conjecture, but I'm keeping in mind that I'm wondering if someone's not downplaying certain things. If you have people in the field who are with the plan and know to suppress information, they can make their adjustments early on. And this is how information is suppressed. Remember, it has to travel the information from the actual event, from the incident. Someone has to go there, obtain the data, obtain the information. It has to travel back. Maybe it goes through multiple sources. By the time it reaches us, certainly, hey, it's some total other thing. But keep that in mind. The information is not always accurate and it's hard to get. 
So, so we're trying to reconfirm and understand the radio iodine reading. Dr. Jaxco, this is the chairman, Jaxco. Not, he's not chairman anymore, but back at that time he was. This is Greg Jaxco. Could you just identify yourself? I just got on the bridge. Mr. Burroughs, this is Chuck Burroughs from Naval Reactors. Dr. Jaxco. Okay, thank you. Redaction, 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 redaction from DOE, NNSA, Department of Energy. We've got your folks in Tokyo on the line. Dr. Jaxco, is there a specific concern right now? I'm just trying to get up to speed. Okay, it almost looks like that redaction there. And that, let me let me go back to this. That that is not Dr. Jaxco speaking. I'd like to clarify that. It looks like the first on page seven of the actual document. Dr. Jaxco says, "Okay, thank you." And then that redacted area covers someone's name and part of what they say, because then it, he says, "From DOE in an SA, we've got your folks in Tokyo on the line." Then Dr. Jaxco is clearly shown as speaking again. So that's somebody else in between there. Don't know who it is. Again, are they proud that they work with nuclear power associated with it? Hmm. Dr. Jaxco, is there a specific concern right now? I'm just trying to get up to speed. And then again, heavy redaction, big block section. Got on the phone was the most surprising reading was the detection actually of radioiodine 90 miles from the Fukushima reactor in the direction of Tokyo at 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7th microcuries. Mr. Burroughs, 10 to the negative 7th. Dr. Holdren, yes, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7th microcuries per milliliter, which is about eight times the occupational derived air concentration. That means that it would be in the range of 20 millirem per hour associated with that concentration. It's still not a concentration that would very quickly trigger a protective action guideline, but it's a pretty high level. Okay, so it wouldn't immediately say you got to get out, you got to get out. But over time, if, en if enough hours elapse, you don't want to be subjected to that. So it gives you here's some crude understanding right here: 1.6 times 10 to the negative seventh is about eight times, according to Dr. Holdren, eight times the occupational derived air concentration. Be in the range of 20 millirem per hour associated with that concentration. Not a concentration that would very quickly trigger a protective action guideline, but in time, but in time. It's still a pretty high level, he says, right? And again, that's, the, again, I know they've redacted a lot out of here, but once you familiarize yourself with this, you clearly see, again, like I was in my warm-up to today's broadcast, they had every reason to go ahead and, and, and play the safe side of things and just get our guys and gals out of there, sail them into the headwinds, go around the world if you have to. But, you know, it was that severe. They had all these indications early on, and this is part of the cover-up. What I've discovered recently in the warm-up to this show, I, I spoke about the fact that that's one thing that's changed. A new update is kind of this, these, this batch of documents came out after Obama was elected. And here we are now talking about the Navy and who was radiated and who wasn't and who didn't make the – a command decision and man up to the plate. Who cares if it meant your career? Someone, multiple people should have spoke up, not just if you had enough people spoke up, man, we could have maybe saved some lives. I'm worried about some kind of cancer effects, latent cancer effects. We know from plutonium, that's the worry with MOX fuel. In these documents, they speak about plume multiple times and the ones we're going to look at today. Plume, 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 multiple plumes, a plume and another plume and another plume. And they know the number three reactor had MOX fuel. That, to me, man, that's the most dangerous substance we got going on that I can think of. I can't think of a better reason to, unless it's some biological black plague that's been released. You know, and that, if, if you think about it, it kind of is. It takes a lot longer to die, perhaps. But we got uh, uh, sailors now that are sick who are, have a, a um, legal action against TEPCO in Japan. And what will come of that, I don't know, because some of their sources they're relying on aren't the most reliable. With some information I'm putting up now from these documents, they may want to get their hands on and start looking and observing. Well, it does, is it damning of TEPCO? Not per se, uh, but it looks kind of like our guys didn't do the right thing and tell them to just get the hell out of there and err on the side of caution. Even later, if you come back and say, oh, we kind of... You know, maybe we jumped the gun a little bit, but better safe than sorry. Wrong. Now we have uh, uh, sailors that are sick. Okay. So we have some heavy redaction again. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7th. That's not so bad. you got to haul butt out of there, but it's bad enough you don't want to camp out there. Let me put it that way. Male participant. Chuck, are you on the line? Question mark. Mr. Burroughs, yes, I am. Male participant. Chuck Castro? 
Mr. Burroughs, oh no, this is Chuck Burroughs. Dr. Dorman, this is Dan Dorman, sir. Male participant, yeah, Dan, do we have any reliable data coming from the Japanese about those measurements? Mr. Dorman, we don't have anything current from the Japanese that would compare to this. We are getting a sample here at the embassy, and we've asked the PMT, Protective Measures Team, to work that back and give us a correlation if the data point from naval reactors fit what we've seen here. Right now we have the one data point from naval reactors, which I understand was followed up shortly after with a second sample that did not have detectable radioiodine in the second sample. We are looking to validate from here what we're seeing and see if we can make the correlation. Mr. Remick, again, we're not having consistency with these readings, let me say really quickly, and, and anything we can come to a number of conclusions, but one, we know we don't, it seems to me we can agree that we don't have the technology, or at least it's not readily available to these people, to give you consistent, accurate readings. And if there's inconsistent, and well, this one is this, this and it doesn't add up, and we got to redo this and redo that. Look, what nuclear power is not for us. It's not. You don't have to go all through this with solar. You really don't. And if you release the suppressed solar technology and let it be more than 20% efficient, a cylinder would have been a, a smashing success. Now, it would have meant nuclear power would have started running out of money. We don't, wouldn't need coal maybe as much or, you know, other sources of energy, but it would have been wildly popular with humans on planet Earth. I can tell you that. Tesla would have given us the nod. Uh, certainly. Certainly. Okay, so he says, Mr. Remick, see if we can make the correlation. Inconsistencies in their readings, and they'll blame it on the instrumentation and so on and so forth. But I tend to think that there's a massive cover-up at play, and the readings that they, the ones they got, they want to downplay, just like TEPCO. No different than TEPCO. The industry is global, and the nuclear industry is a global industry. Mr. Remick, this is Alan Remick from the Department of Energy. We've got a team in the field out there. We've taken some samples up near the plant. We haven't got the analysis from them. I'm a little bit concerned that we're going off of one non-repeatable sample. 50 counts of a background detectable is just not a significant sample in my book. Again, Department of Energy, really quickly, let me give you a tiny little bit of history on them. During Three Mile Island, they insisted, along with Three Mile Island authorities, that there was no significant release, nothing to worry about, just like this time, just like this time. Guess what? They're settling out of court for over a million dollars for a family with a Down syndrome kid. Okay, now, now if there was no release, what? What? What's up with that? What's up with that? So, again, they're less than honest with us, I can put it. They're less than forthright. They're less than honest. With this kind of industry, nuclear power, you really can't play that game, can you? Look what's happening now. Look what's happening now, and you can't play that game. We're going to run a study for gun violence with CDC. No, Obama's got that covered, but uh, cancer study, CDC, nah. He doesn't see a reason to, right? He just doesn't see a reason. Why would we want to do a cancer study? Gosh. Wow. Okay. Male participant. I think that is probably a good, another male participant says, this is inaudible, and I just joined the bridge from Japan regarding those samples. Okay, again, look at this inaudible at a key time. This is, insert person's name, and I just joined the bridge from Japan regarding those samples. They realize that if they black out too many names, that begins to, uh, someone like me is going to go off on it, right? And so every once in a while they say, well, just make it a generic male participant. And if the guy even states his name, that's inaudible. It can be, again, uh, uh, Neil R. Gross, transcribers. Wow. I would do like a better hearing test for the people you're hiring, maybe. Just saying a uh, thought that hit my mind and make sure their hearing is up to par and they, they can hear these names. We can find out who these people are, can't we? This is inaudible, and I just joined the bridge from Japan regarding those samples. Another male participant. Have we done any analysis on those samples other than with the Frisker? That, I believe, is the handheld device. Male participant. The sample is still in the fields. Let me catch up to the data here. That sample has decayed away to just slightly above background using field instruments at this point. Therefore, the radioiodine sample, we believe, was less than 10 to the negative 7th microcuries per milliliter at the time that the sample was taken. Another male participant. Okay. Male participant. You don't have a positive reading on the sample? Male participant. Right. I believe it got cross-contaminated or something when the data set was provided. Wow. So convenient, right? That's my comment there. So convenient to me, these, you know... 
male participant. That, too, is reassuring because the most plausible hypothesis with just one data point like that is whether it was suspect. It sounds like that was the case. Well, to me, again, this is my opinion. I'm interjecting. It just sounds like once a, a, a proper sample got sent back and and they don't know what to do with it because it can be like, oh, man, this is, really doesn't look good. Like the worst-case scenarios we previously talked about when they, they run and they're like, oh, that's not good. Send it back. Give me something else. They're foot dragging on it. It's almost as if we're trying to influence them, that kind of thing. Presence, worst case. But do they act on the worst case? No. What kind of disaster was it? A multiple melt. When did they know about that? Early on, certainly by the 19th, 2021st, these guys know. They must know by now. They're not going to let on. They'll redact it if they screw up and someone says in the documents anything, I suspect, pertaining to mox or plutonium or high readings, that kind of stuff. That's all redacted. It's just too convenient, too convenient that it's all perfect, works perfectly for them. They even talk about the president's speech in the Rose Garden and how a certain scenario will work for him because he didn't say no levels at all. He said non-threatening uh, levels, and he laid it at the feet of NRC and other experts. I give him that much. But we got the president's model in here, president's worst case scenario, right? And that's what other presidents do you think they're talking about? I think it's we're talking about Barack Obama, the president of the United States of America. He's running worst case scenarios, White House involvement, zero zip zilch warning. So for all you fools that voted for him, hey, man, and you knew this last time. I've been shouting this since what? Wow. Well, we're coming up on 2 AF, 2 after Fukushima. And 2012 in February, I started writing about it. So that's how long it's been for me. Still plodding along. Okay, let's see. I believe it got cross-contaminated, it says. Male participant. That, too, is reassuring because the most plausible hypothesis with just one data point like that is whether it was suspect. Sounds like that was the case. A male participant. Another male participant. But the data that is coming in here in Yukoska, which is 173 miles away, we are getting up particulate radioactivity. We are getting up to 7 times 10 to the negative 9 microcuries per milliliter for this plume, P-L-U-M-E, for this plume. That is even while it's raining, so we're getting fairly high numbers even while it's raining. Loose surface contamination levels from this plume, P-L-U-M-E, are in the range of 5,000 microcuries per probe. And if you notice in my latest YouTube video, I went in, in the last set of documents, and I captured everywhere it said offshore. And I showed you they talked about stuff blowing offshore. Again, why did I do that? Because we had... American citizens, our, our Navy men and women, are on the Navy vessels, and they were out and about. They were out and about while all this was. Did they order a mass evacuation? All ships sailing to the wind, go around the other side of the planet and come up on the East Coast or something? I don't know, just off the top of my head, winging it. You know, I'm not a, a PATCOM uh, authority, but I tell you what, I, I, common sense is you just get them out and err on the side of caution. Male participant, can you convert that to dose numbers for me? I apologize. We've just woken up, and I'm trying to get up to speed. Can you convert that to dose rate? Male participant, here is the conversation. If we're talking about iodine and, therefore, we're talking about a thyroid dose, okay, that's what goes in your thyroid, then the derived air concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 8 microcuries per milliliter corresponds to 50 rem, REM, in 2,000 hours. That would be a 25 millirem per hour to the thyroid. Now, you do the math and figure out how many hours in a week and a month. And again, this is what we're allowed to see. That is the level 25 millirem per hour to the thyroid that would be associated with the 2 times 10 to the negative 8. What they've just been talking about is numbers getting close to 1 times 10 to the negative 8 on the ship. That would correspond to something in the range of 12 millirem per hour to the thyroid. Male participant, Dan, are you there? Mr. Dorman, yes, sir. Male participant, can we take these numbers? Do we have someone in there in either NISA or other contacts? I'm trying to think NISA. No, I'm trying to get some of these NISA. Some of these anacronyms, folks, seriously. NISA, that's not the nuclear response thing that Wiggins heads up, so I need to write that down to make sure I've got that. Okay. Can we take these numbers? Do we have someone in there in either NISA or other contacts that we can get some validation or confirmation of these numbers from? 
Mr. Dorman, we'll try and get them. Probably Mext, M-E-X-T, I think is the one that is doing most of the local sampling. We'll see if we can get some numbers to compare. Redaction, redaction, redaction. Female participant, this is the redaction, 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 redaction. On this, question mark, what are you seeing? Dr. Ariz, A-R-I-Z, phonetic, might not be the correct spelling or the correct name. I'm sorry. What are you seeing out at the UCODA as a standard background for radioiodine? Dr. Ariz, what we're seeing right now, the most recent sample we pulled off, was 4.8e to the negative tenth microcuries per milliliter for iodine. It's been elevated the last day. This morning we are getting some elevated measurements, but in general that's fairly consistent with what, what we've been seeing for the past three, four, five days, and we've been taking measurements. One thing that we have been seeing today is because it's raining, we are seeing elevated readings on the ground. We are slightly elevated on air samples as well. The exposure rates are increasing. Okay, I might I remind you again, this is the 21st. He clearly indicates here the past three, four, five days they've been taking measurements. It's been elevated, fairly consistent. It's been elevated the last day. What are we talking about here? Now we're talking about 4.8. This seems to me to be the highest one yet. 4.8e to the negative tenth microcuries per milliliter for iodine. So uh, 10 days have elapsed, 11 days have elapsed. There has been no evacuation, mass evacuation of our Navy vessels nor troops off of Japan. And what we're going to look for is in the coming years, these latent cancers from the plutonium, from the MOX fuel mix, Again, this is my understanding. I'm a layman. I'm not an expert. I don't have a degree in nuclear power. But, hey, I'm willing to read the documents and tell you about them. So you got to settle for what you can get, right? Gunderson, Gunderschill, and he knows all about them. He's even said he's read them. Arnie Gunderschill from the Fairwinds, right? And he's not the expert he claims to be either. And I've heard a whole lot about Arnie, and it's not, doesn't all, uh, it's not all good. It's not all good. But he won't talk about the... Again, does he talk about the mocks and the plutonium and that kind of stuff? Yeah. And does he talk about what's in these FOIA documents? No, because this is, you know, you, you lose your job real quick in the nuclear industry if you do. I'll put it that way. Now, I don't work for them, and I don't care. Right? So, now back to the documents. They're pulling 4.8e to the negative tenth this time. And for multiple days, they've been having high measurements. Okay. It says, we do have two teams that are up towards the reactor area roughly at the 13-mile line that the Japanese had put in place. It's really 20 kilometers or 13 miles. We're taking some measurements there as well. We are taking air samples. We are taking high and audible detectors for the soil. Convenient and audible there, I tell you. What kind of detectors? High and audible detectors for the soil. We're also taking exposure rate measurements. The air samples, it will be some time until we get them back for analysis. It will be the end of the day until we get those back for analysis, but the exposure rates we have noticed that the same, we were at the same location yesterday as we are today. We had a five-fold increase in our exposure rate. Now, we suspect that is primarily due to the washout of the materials today. However, it could also, the winds are on shore today. There could be additional release. It's just difficult for us to quantify that. Okay, so did the winds blow offshore all the time? No, no, they did not. But there's indication they blew offshore, onshore, and all around the direction of the clock as the prevailing winds carried the plume and the emanations, the smoke, the smoldering, the radioactive isotopes that are released are carried all around. Eventually, they're carried aloft like anything else, like the Chinese pollution that we've been worried about for years hitting the West Coast, and they're carried from the Orient, from Japan, from China. All that stuff's carried over here on the Pacific jet stream. We've been very clear on that, and you can Google that and look into it. All the airline pilots catch that to save fuel on the way back from Japan or China or wherever in the Orient. Okay, it says, uh, so far we have had a sampler at the embassy. We've been doing routine analysis on those on a daily basis. What we get at Yokosuka is similar to what we are getting at the embassy. We haven't detected iodine since we've been here. We are detecting it above background, but it is a fairly low level. Excuse me. It's on the order of the 10 to the negative 10th 
10 to the minus somewhere in the 10 to the negative 10th microcuries per milliliter. I believe someone mentioned before the whole body DAC, capital DAC, for dry air concentration for iodine is 2 times 10 to the negative 8th. So we've been seeing a fraction of that consistently, male participant. I would recommend that we try and get confirmation from the Japanese on this. If you could just reiterate for me, if we reach the 10 to the negative 8, the DAC level, how long would it take before you received an exposure that would trigger a PAG? I think it's talking about a PAG, a PAG, Protective Action Guideline. Again, the transcription is not perfect, but I'm, I, I read through that and thought to myself, I think they're talking about the Protective Action uh, Guideline. So he's asking how long would it take, he says, if we reach the 10 to the negative 8, the DAC level, how long would it take before you received an exposure that would trigger a, a protective action uh, guideline or a, you know, a warning you, you got to get out of there, basically? Male participant, about 100 hours. Okay, 100 hours. So we know at 10 to the negative 8 now, we're talking 100 hours before the protective action guideline would tell you, hey, you need to evacuate this area and go to an area with a lower level. Male participant, 2 times 10 to the negative 8, but 2 times 10 to the negative 8th is based upon occupational limits. That means you are exposed to that amount for 2,000 hours, which is the work year. That is equivalent to 5 rem. The PAG level depends upon which equivalent to 5 rem. The PAG level depends upon which PAG you're using, but if you use the PAG levels 1 to 5 rem, you would be looking at essentially the same type of limit. If you're at the DAC level, it will take you a year to get to the 5 rem PAG level. Male participant, okay. Male participant, given that we have, we're not at the 10 to the negative 8th level, and that if we did reach the 10 to the negative 8th level, we would be talking about near accumulated exposure before we would reach heavy redaction, heavy redaction, heavy redaction. Male participant, inaudible from DOE again, would it be possible for us to get the, you know, real quick, let me break in and say, if it's innocuous and the levels are low and nothing's going on, we're just, all this conversation here is about levels and measurements. That's all it is. There is not, that's not where a ship is at, how many crew is on a ship, the ammunition carried on it, their tactics, where they sailed to and from, the time and places they were, where they were. That's not at all here. There's no military, we're not giving away any, anything militarily speaking, I can't see why this is redacted. I honestly can't accept, except what does fit the piece of the puzzle is there's damning stuff in here that they knew there was levels so incredibly high they should have got everybody out. Every, I mean, think about it now. It's a six units at Daiichi facility. One through three had meltdowns. We know that for sure. And number three being the MOX fuel unit. Number four as all indications in the document, in fact, I've been uh, running this through my head and thinking about this a lot, I, and this is, again, opinion and conjecture, but I think we're, until I see pictures of Unit 4 that I can rely upon and I know are genuine, I have to assume what I read in the documents is genuine. What I'm allowed to and what I can extrapolate from them is that Unit 4 very likely early on suffered a melt through on the spent fuel Okay, and it also, I'm being told, there's a very likely possibility they had MOX fuel in there as well that was waiting to be uploaded. It hadn't been, it wasn't spent fuel, wasn't hot, the other stuff was hot, but when the water sloshed out and cracked and drained out and they realized there's no water in that uh, spent uh, fuel pool reservoir, it's a matter of hours before its stuff begins to become so superheated that it begins to melt down, okay? And that would melt at such a temperature, yes, it does burn through concrete. In the NUREG manual, they're very clear about that. I haven't read the NUREG manual, but in the documents, they talk all about it, and that seems to be the indication. So what was their worry? It melts down through to the torus. What happens when it hits the torus? Hey, I don't know. I'd sure like to find out. I guess that's my uh, next thing I need to look into. But whatever the case is, you can clearly see all indications is, number four, it's already melted through. Now, we're being told that it might collapse and this and that, but a, a lot of us researchers that are going into these FOIA documents are beginning to wonder what really is the status of four. Has the worst already happened and it's just been totally covered up with a, a, a suppression, information suppression, a blackout, and then psyops to 
say, hey, if it collapses and this is going to happen, and hey, they're offloading fuel in the next year, da, 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 and maybe it's already happened, you know, and there's no reliable information, only in these documents. I can prove what is said in a document. What does it mean? Can't always prove that, but you can judge for yourself, and, and there's a really only one conclusion. It's a massive cover-up and conspiracy to hide the real effects of the plume and the fallout and the radiation the emanation since the Fukushima disaster. Male participant. Inaudible from DOE again. Would it be possible for us, again, he's probably stating his name, from Department of Energy. Are they proud? Are they proud? 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 No, they're not proud. Because if he was proud of it, I'd be calling, Mama, Mama, I'm working in nuclear. I got a job at DOE. Oh, you want to interview me? Yeah, my name's so-and-so. I work for a proud employee of DOE. We only do righteous works down here. Tell the truth on the up and up. Good guys working for the American public. Yeah, darn right I work for DOE. My name is Patrick Henry. Then it's ain't like that. It's just not. It's not. Okay. Inaudible from DOE again. Would it be possible for us to get the anomalous air samples for a reading so that we can take an accurate measurement with HPGE and move on from there also for the morning call? i got to stop right here. Let's look into this little uh, paragraph, this sentence. Male participant, inaudible, don't get a nose name, from DOE, Department of Energy. Again, I've given you background on DOE, less than honest on Three Mile Island. We know their history, okay? Not a uh, 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 honest, forthright completely. Anyway, they're not completely honest and forthright organization. Would it be possible for us to get the anomalous air samples for a reading so that we can take an accurate measurement with HPGE and move on from there also for the morning call? Can we get the anomalous? Now they're calling it anomalous. Like it doesn't make sense, totally wrong, but hey, maybe it's just a high reading and it's accurate. Did you ever think about that? So now we're terming it in a negative manner. Anomalous. It's a weird, off the wall, doesn't make sense, probably not reliable. Air samples, plural. Air samples, plural. For a reading, again, these transcriptions may be a little off, might not be, but air samples looks like plural for a reading so that we can take an accurate measurement with HPGE. This is another method they're going to say, let us examine it ourselves in this particular way. It'll be more accurate, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then the morning call, then later on, you know, we'll give us information back. Let us hand, let us uh, have a look at it, and we'll make it right. Hey, that's what I get out of this. Y'all can draw your own conclusion, and I suggest you do. I can only cause you to think, okay? I can tell you when it's my opinion. But it certainly looks that way, and this is consistent throughout all of these documents. If you're just tuning in and you see one screen capture, you, you, you're not going to believe me and you're not going to understand. But if you've watched or listened to multiple broadcasts and you, you're beginning to come, become familiar with these documents, well, you clearly see what's going on. It's called cover-up. It's called a conspiracy. JFK talked about it. Uh, Jager Ever Hoover Eisenhower, a lot of guys have alluded to this. It's not a fantasy. It's not make-believe. Very, very real. Okay, Mr. Miller responds. He says, this is Miller. We'll bring it down to Yukoska. We can put it on the high-purity geranium and look at it and see what's in there and report. Redaction, redaction, redaction. Sorry to interrupt. I have Admiral Willard. Okay, there's the other guy. Admiral Willard. Let me write that down on my notes. Admiral Willard on the phone, he says. And, and again, to back up real quick, he said, let's put it on the high purity drain. Let's take that sample that looks really, really bad. Let's get it out of here and we'll look at it. And, you know, I, I have suspicions they're going to find something's wrong with it. It's much lower than the, what they originally thought it was. Just call me crazy, but I, I kind of infer that. I have Admiral Willard on the phone, he says. Admiral, I think you should tell the group the action you intend to take immediately because that puts us in a different position here that we need to talk through. Tell the group to take the action you intend to take immediately because that puts us in a different position here that we need to talk through. Interesting. Admiral Willard. This is Admiral Willard from U.S. PATCOM. That's Pacific Command. And, and folks, if you don't know much about them, that's where um, Bill Cooper, William Cooper, came from, PATCOM. He was debriefed the head of a PATCOM, is my understanding. And uh, there's a lot of interesting briefs came across his desk. Now, are they all... Um, true and accurate? No, there's disinformation just like in alternative media, just like in mainstream, just like on YouTube, just like in independent, just like in the blogs. And we already know NRC has their own blogs, and we know they have their own guys to go maintain threads. It's been in the documents. It's been millions and millions and millions on it, right? 
So, I'm not to get distracted, but PATCOM, that's big. That's big. That's As far as I'm concerned, everything's underneath them. The Navy owns everything. That's that's what I think anyway, and, and there's a lot of evidence to indicate that. They are the most powerful organization. So, we have Admiral Willard. We have Admiral uh, Donald. Some big names, some big uh, powerful figures are here discussing this. Some of this is redacted. Again, we can't see everything, and we don't want to reveal true positions and number and, and strength of uh, forces, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're just talking radiation levels, folks, and it's not that bad like they want us to believe, I can find no reason, zero, zero, that they wouldn't just show us all the measurements, right? They're all benign. They're all background. They're just above. No big deal. But no. Okay, Admiral Willard. This is Admiral Willard from U.S. PATCOM. As a minimum step forward, what I redacted, 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 big block redaction. Uh, that's the last from Willard. Mr. Rimmick is speaking now. Mr. Remick, Admiral Willard, this is Alan Remick from DOE, Department of Energy. I don't know if you were on the line when we were discussing the validity of this air sample. Did you give that analysis? Admiral Willard, I did not. I was the one that took the initial call from the NRO, capital NRO, representative in Yokosuka that explained it. I talked to Kirk Donald briefly about the fact that it's a single sample of several and anomalous as compared to the air and surface samples that we're getting at our bases. And I think as well inconsistent with the air sampling that was done in some of the testing near the site and in the plume. Again, plume, they're talking about a plume again. That's a larger concentration, a plume. It's not invisible. We're, we're talking something you can see, smoke and a, a heavy concentration. Discussing the validity of this air sample. Again, they don't want to, they don't want to come to terms with it. Lots redacted. Better safe than sorry, in my opinion, regardless of FOIA documents, regardless of air samples, regardless of measurements or what anyone t tries to tell me. Just judging from satellite visible reconnaissance of the Fukushima disaster at Daiichi facility, Anyone who has any clue of nuclear power, and I didn't at the time, totally ignorant, totally ignorant. My dad's even in that line of work for many years. I don't know jack about it. But anyone who has even an inkling of an idea about what happens in the meltdown, hey, you can just look at the the overhead on the 14th and 15th at the latest after number three went up on the 14th, the event on the 14th, and the uh, con ensuing lube oil fire, which wasn't a lube oil fire at all. Very clear in these documents. wasn't a lube oil fire. Something melts big time. Number three now, Mox Fuel Plutonium. Did they get the Navy ships out? Again, I'm saying FOIA documents aside, all measurements aside, just knowing number three had Mox Fuel Plutonium Uranium, nanoform, and knowing the damage on the 14th when it exploded, much less what was already previously visible by satellite reconnaissance on the 11th and 12th and 13th and come 14th, and then you have this plume, multiple plumes coming off of it on the fourth. See, I didn't realize it's ongoing. It wasn't just 11th. You had multiple explosions, emanations ongoing. Even now there's steam coming up from cracks in the ground, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. So, wow, did they get the, our ships out into safety? Negative, negative. I don't care about your radiation measurements. I don't care about for your documents. To err on the side of caution is what should have happened. Now, why didn't that not happen? It's quite clear. The nuclear industry does not want us to really know what it's really all about when things go wrong. When they go wrong. Not if, but when they go wrong. And they're going to go wrong over here if we keep waiting around too long to set things right and decommission these plants. Okay, the issue at hand is that there is activity at each of our bases to the south and some redaction, redaction, heavy redaction. Really appreciate your thoughts on that if you have one. Dr. Jacksco. Admiral, this is Greg Jacksco with the NRC. Admiral Willard, yes. Redacted, redacted, redacted. Correct me if I'm incorrect in my understanding. We're a factor of at least 10 below what would be an airborne concentration limit, which would be applied to workers. If you were to receive that exposure over your work year, namely over a 2,000-hour period, then redacted, 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 However, we do operate on the principle of what we call ALARA, -A -A, ALARA, which is as low as reasonably achievable, which would, in my mind, lead us to what I, big block of redaction, big block, 
Concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 8th microcuries of iodine-131 per milliliter corresponds, I believe, not to 5 rem to the whole body in 2,000 hours, but to 50 rem at the thyroid to factor in. Okay. And I will once again remind the listeners that there's no indication in these documents anyone is testing for anything other than cesium iodine, and I have heard strontium once or twice. Mox fuel once or twice in all the documents. Um, that's it. That is it. That's it. No, And, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff released in a meltdown. Some stuff is short-lived, a matter of days, hours, minutes even. But other stuff is weeks, months, years, thousands of years, 100,000 years, long, long time. They're not testing for that on purpose. Just like the CDC is not going to be asked by President Barack Obama to run any kind of study or analysis on cancer rates since Fukushima, it's going to be a dead silence. Can you hold on? Can you hear that? Right, right, right. That's like the dead silence from the cancer study that CDC is not going to do. You know, if I had the money, I'd be down in Vegas. And I'd say I'm ready to because a book you want to take my bet because I'm going to guess. Just like the Sandy Hook video footage, you're not going to get to see. Just like it, you know, you're never going to get to see all of the footage of the quote unquote plane crash into the Pentagon. I'm guessing we're not ever going to get to see anything about the cancer studies right after Fukushima. You know, in Chernobyl the Russians did the same thing. They went in the hospitals and grabbed it, shredded it, uh, uh, protected it. It was very difficult to do a study. The Nestorinko and Yablokov uh, researchers said in the cost and consequence of Chernobyl to, to people and environment, it's very difficult to find your information when it's being suppressed by the government who's responsible for protecting that industry. That's fascism, plain and simple. Now it's corporatism because the, as we see in these documents in previous broadcasts, I, I told you where the, they're saying that industry is going to determine the federal role. Right? That's how bad it is now. That means Bechtel and GE, they tell the government what to do. They, that no wonder Bechtel is going to insert the reservoir tank early, even though they know it's cracked. They want that early bonus, something 60 million or something. Don't quote me on that. It was a lot of millions of dollars, right? They know not to worry about it. They tell government what to do. They'll pay a stupid little fine. They'll say, okay, fine us something that the sheeple will think is a big fine. Make it, I don't know, a million dollars, okay? And we'll keep the other freaking 58 million. Dependent on the wind and the weather to minimize our exposure, certainly it's redacted, redacted, redacted online still. Again, clear indication, wind and weather to minimize exposure. That determines where the bulk, the heavy levels of radiation will go. And I'm telling you, it went all around, all over the place. I have plume model maps, 65, 70 kilometers. They're talking miles off the shore in these documents. So they know it went all... We have, you know, we got a lot of Navy vessels right there. It's a big a Navy port in Japan, right? It's an island nation. That's where we're parking it since World War II. It's a power play because that's a very strategic position, globally speaking. You you want to own Japan because of the Orient, because of uh, Korea, because of China, even Russia, even in the Pacific uh, uh, realm. That's what PATCOM would tell you. You want to own that strategically. Well, it's kind of ruined now. I mean, you can send soldiers there, but I wouldn't advise going there. I'd refuse service. I'd say, heck no, I'm not deploying to to Japan. Nah, I don't think so. Send me somewhere uh, on the east coast of America or maybe Australia. Can I deploy to Australia maybe? Okay, a lot of redaction there. Mr. Virgilio is back now speaking. Mr. Virgilio, yes, Chairman, we're here. Big block of redaction. Intermittent based on the weather, and we only have a few samples that we're going on. But the samples we have are all showing very little. Again, a lot of redaction there. They're not something they're hiding. I mean, you made the point. It's factors of 10 less than where I think we should be making those recommendations. Mr. Burroughs, this is Chuck Burroughs from Naval Reactors. The other thing to consider here is that these particular air sample results are indicative as well as radioiodine, also cesium and strontium. Okay, there's strontium. We rarely hear that. But I've tested strontium in my rainwater um, here after post-Fukushima, trying to think when it was June, March, April, May, June, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And, and, yes, it did test positive for strontium. The surface contamination on the ground is also eligible to resuspend as persons walk and as they perhaps pick up things and get it on their hands and clothing. This is actually a similar release that occurred earlier in the year, in the week, that the Navy detected in Yokosuka, 
earlier in the week that the Navy detect. Okay, again, they've, this has been going on for days. They've been detecting stuff all over the place. A lot is redacted. We don't get to know the not-so-serious readings and the readings that particular people I'm becoming familiar with that downplay these readings consistently. These are the ones who always, oh, no, here's my calculations, and it's all nice, and everything's all right, okay? These are the ones that seriously need to be questioned. Uh, I wanted to also point out he discusses pick up things and get it on their hands and clothing. It can be resuspended. You know, when you're talking MOX fuel and plutonium and what have you, yeah, that's going to get me resuspended. You think they can pick that all up out of the dirt? Or really, did you see the explosion? I've got it in a video you can watch on YouTube. It's a lot of particulates in that as that mushroom cloud, before it totally dissipates, there's a huge section you see falling off to the side with a trail of contaminants and dust and smoke and debris behind it. And these are heavier chunks that are just falling back down to the earth. Some is a mile away, I've read, or a couple kilometers away. So it was distributed and will be redistributed. And that's why, for even having one still there in the Navy and Army, I think it's insane, patently insane. I, I would have had them out. There's just too much risk involved. And we know low doses now. And I've got a study that I'll go over on this. Low doses are very dangerous. Don't kid yourself. They're very dangerous. You don't have to stand next to a critical reactor to get sick. A low dose over time from a long distance away does have an effect. There was a mortality index study done back when Chernobyl happened right here in the United States and North America, and it was very similar, congruent to the findings and the methodology with the studies been done recently after Fukushima. Okay, a lot of heavy redaction. He says, Wednesday of last week, male participant. If this is inconsistent... Uh, blackout, 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 redacted. Point, we still believe the doses are low. Maybe it, blackout, 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 redacted, better indicate uh, indication of the origin and the source and the reasons for the spike that we're seeing right now. Spike, again, I think I titled this one. Yeah, we're, uh, the spike we're seeing right now. Okay, we don't get to, we don't get to see what that spike was in terms of numbers. But now we know, yep, there's a spike, all right. There's a high reading that doesn't fit in with their plans. It's not aligned with what they want. Okay, doesn't mean it's not reality, folks, okay? But that doesn't mean that it's what they want and certainly not what they're prepared to give to the public, period, ever, ever. You just don't, this information, until these documents come out, we're in the dark, totally in the dark. We don't even get to see the non-redacted stuff, right, Till these documents come out. And then Mr. Castro chimes and says, Mr. Burroughs, this is Greg Castro, also in the NRC Operations Center. Is there a contact number we could get for you or you could contact us? Again, if it's going to go into a lengthy discussion about something that would be pages of redaction, these guys have been around long enough. They know how it works. We take it offline, meet me for dinner, another phone number, I'll call you here, use this other source. They, they, they know about this. They, they, and they don't want to, again, they know we're going to look at these documents that's always in the back of the mind of most of these players. Some make mistakes and blurt things out. Maybe that causes more redaction. I don't know. But most of them have been around long enough. They, they know how it works. You downplay everything. Keep your mouth shut. Mr. Burroughs, correct. Mr. Castro, thank you. A lot of redaction. I, I, I capped all of this in my screen caps. I want you to see the redaction, folks. I, again, are we talking, what kind of secrets we got here? Is this a technology everybody in the world wants? You know, things that melt down anytime there's a slightest tsunami or earthquake and your diesel generators don't work and it's just a, it's a failed containment in the system. If the station blackout, Chuck Castro says they're going to melt down. It's just, right. They got to redact a lot of this. So I wanted you to see all the redaction. And this and again, what are we talking about? Navy ships. Angst, folks. Angst. Causing them angst to think about the fact that their monopoly of this failed. Absolutely. It's archaic to me. It's like I think back to the 50s and the comrade and the communism and the commie red invasion and all this weird commie stuff. That was, that's nuclear power. It's that old and outdated. It's long. <laughs> Trust me, they can make a solar panel. Be so, it's called a solar tree, actually. And if you do a solar tree with a software program where your leaves, in other words, these small panels, follow the sun around, just like in Zechariah in the Bible. If you read the candlestick and the bowls, and you, you can read about the olive trees and the golden oil, well, that olive tree is a solar tree. It's incredible, incredible. It's a solar tree, and a kid just invented one a year ago, a couple years back, won an award for him. Very efficient. 
and that the tree is based on the Fibonacci sequence of the sequence of these of what occurs in nature as the branches split in that particular degrees, and that's what it's based on. And it has leaves instead of one solar panel that just sits in one direction, right? And so if you add that to the little software that causes those leaves to turn facing the sun, just like leaves do during the day, if you time lapse and watch them move, I'm telling you, we're stuck with nuclear power. Why? Because if you knew the truth, just about solar. Now, all the other crazy inventions and thousands, five, six thousands over here alone pats me and suppress all this to the side. Solar panel, it's a way to go. Oh, real quick, I'm holding in my hand a piece of paper that left on my wife's car at the laundromat the other day, and this is a device. I've been seeing these. It's becoming popular. Slowly it's leaking out, and it's probably not super affordable at yet, yet, because the suppression is on, and the chemtrail planes are spraying every day to keep the sun down, right? Almost every day. I had two chemtrail-free days here in Florida the last two days. Thank you very much. I appreciate you to stop flying the drones for a couple days and spraying me. Okay, but this device is a solar panel, and it connects to a converter, and then it runs a power cord inside and plugs into your wall socket. If you have enough hooked up and you're generating enough, this one says 1,200-watt solar unit. And on a bright day and sufficient, you know, sunlight, you can produce quite a bit, enough you can sell it back to the power company. And this is something we can all have. We can all build. This isn't that complicated of a technology. It's not like nuclear where these incredible extenuating circumstances have to be maintained, the containment, the cooling, the environment, the ground can't shake, a meteorite can't strike, a, um, you know, tornado. Uh, anything you that's there again is a danger right so you see clear there's a solution is what I'm getting at there's an obvious solution they're going to create jobs it's going to remove power from this monopoly to some large degree because we're all dependent on gasoline we're all dependent on coal and nuclear and those are those are those are like to me I'm thinking black and white pictures some guy playing on a piano and while the music and you're watching a film and there's no sound to it that's what comes across my mind with those technologies because there's plenty of stuff around now you know you can split hydrogen right off the water H2O we burn the hydrogen Japan before the earthquake now coincidentally Japan had a production water car you could literally take your hose from your water spigot pour it right into the tank and drive off it's split through electrolysis, the hydrogen. If you apply enough electricity, it breaks the hydrogen molecule, molecule away, and, a, and oxygen separates. That's your byproduct, oxygen. Woo, that's bad to have in the environment, right? Ooh, horrible, horrible. Doesn't nuclear power, the more you study this stuff, the more, you know, I sat there one, it probably took me a week. This is one of the many wake-ups that I had when I realized my older brother, who's worked hard his whole life to support his family and raise his kids and everything, I'm thinking to myself, when I found out the alternative sources of power that were being suppressed and, 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 and then what we were saddled with and how expensive and dangerous it was, yeah, it took me about a week of spinning around to really come to terms with how many hours of my brother's life went down the drain when had our government supplied a solar panel to his house, especially one of the new modern ones that will have software. It's a solar tree, essentially. You know what, folks? It's incredible. It's like crimes against humanity. That's, you know, I'm putting this phrase into people's minds. I want people to start just imagine it, just daydream it. you got to believe it and daydream about it, just like a song before it becomes real and you record it, right? Mass arrests on an unprecedented scale. That's the phrase. And crimes against humanity, too, right? But, hey, that's where we're at. The more I think about it, nuclear power, it's just, it's sick. And it's sick people are getting away with it. Even more sick, there's no, there doesn't seem to be a big uproar right now. We're just waiting to have our meltdown over here. Just waiting. Go on YouTube and type in Fort Calhoun on my channel and watch those videos where I actually uh, have documented weaponized weather in the United States that appears, for all intents and purposes, to have been targeted at a nuclear power plant. Okay? You can believe it or not believe it. It's up to you. I know what happened. I know what I see. And that's my opinion. Okay, again, a lot of redaction here. Mr. Castro says, no, we picked up XYZ. It's premature. While we, a lot of redaction, redaction, redaction. Heard that the stabilized measurement for particulate radioactivity at the location 90 miles from the relief, as I understand it, is in the range of 2 times 10 to the negative 9th microcuries per milliliter. That is 10 times below 
the level that would be giving 25 millirem per hour to the adult thyroid. So we would be talking about 2.5 millirem per hour to the adult thyroid, maybe 5 millirem per hour to a child's thyroid. That means that at 100 hours, the standard four-day calculation that's used for the protective action guidelines, you would still be at about a tenth of the dose to a child's thyroid that would cause you to administer potassium iodide or take other actions such as evacuation. I might remind you in my latest video pertaining to the angst and the moving of the Navy ships, I show you a screen capture from an email that says, hey, you're on your way to Japan, make sure you stop in and pick up your KI, your potassium iodine. So someone had a reason to tell them to carry it. And, and also, at the same time this accident happened, you know, we weren't stocked up over here, really. No, sir, Ray, we're not. To my understanding, uh, we're still really not stocked up with it over here. If there's a meltdown near you, chances are you're not going to, you're not even going to get that. And, and NRC will say, well, there's like a bunch of stuff released. Now, they'll say that. When they try to argue their case in this stance, they'll say, well, it's more than just um, iodine release, they'll say. They don't test for more than cesium iodine. But when it plays to that, they try to make it play to, say, to their advantage. They'll say, well, there's a lot more than that release. This only protects you against one thing. And I say, yes, but if you drop me in a pit of snakes and you have 10 different poisonous snakes, at least throw me the antivenom to one, right? Please, thank you. Now I'm down to nine. I've got to deal with nine more poisonous snakes. If I can figure out what to do with them, it's one step in the right direction, point being, right? So potassium iodine, look, something doesn't add up here. How come they're picking it up before they head over there? How come they're shipping it over to the Japanese? Seriously, indicated in the documents, they're shipping them to the Japanese, potassium iodine, but nothing to worry about our men and women on the Navy ships. They won't need any. All these samples are low. And don't worry about the redacted stuff now, but look at these nice low ones that we won't redact. They know we're looking through these documents. And so I say documents, schmockuments. Okay, put it to the side. Aerial reconnaissance, satellite reconnaissance of the damaged nuclear facility on the 14th and 15th after what they knew then with the number three exploding on the 14th. There was no reason not to have evacuated everyone you could reasonably without someone getting hurt in a rush to get out of there. Seriously. The Japanese were catching planes to such a degree that, you know, it's like a it's like a madhouse at the airport, people trying to get out. In the documents, protesters were all around TEPCO, protest their own government building. They understand they what the seriousness. Now we don't over here per se, and TEPCO was liars, but in the end it all comes out. And in time, just like Chernobyl, we can look back at Chernobyl now, unfortunately, and say, well, over 900,000, a million people have already died. More will die. I mean, in, in, in the Ukraine, they're still having deformations. Now we're dropping depleted uranium in the Mideast, too. So, wow. It's just like we know no, um, I don't know. We don't have any, and there's no restrictor plate on what's going on right now. Nobody has, there's no, who's running the show? Because whoever it is is darned incompetent. And you can't control everyone, or some of these most dangerous technologies, you have to shut them down as soon as possible. But you can't without releasing alternative stuff that they cannot monopolize. It's kind of like cannabis. The reason they won't legalize it is that it would take the beer sales and the pharmaceutical sales and take them all down, just for monetary reasons. Plus, they're jailing people and, and taking people's property. It's very profitable, very profitable. And same thing with nuclear power. It's no, we're saddled with these you know, where is it ever going to go away? Are we ever going to cure cancer? There's too many jobs. I know people in the medical field, quite a number, as a matter of fact, they understand. If the cure to cancer ever comes to light, and there probably is a number now, Rick Simpson, cannabis oil apparently, and a number of other particular substances, baking soda, uh, or the other, what's the guy's, the, um, oh, well, you take his, follow his plan, and you only eat green stuff, you don't use cosmetics, you clean up your environment and your food and water intake. The Gerson, that's the guy's name. There may be a number of methods, right? But it's not profitable. They need people to get cancer. That's a huge business. Think of the boom we're going to have now after Fukushima over here. Hey, you want to go in the medical field? Go into the cancer industry. They'll treat you with chemotherapy and charge you and take all your money, and then you die, right? That's the way it looks to me anyway. If you see something different, let me know. Meanwhile, the sheeple's wearing pink walking counterclockwise, and I'm told that if they cover enough miles in the counterclockwise direction, if enough people wear pink, you got to wear pink, too. That's part of the plan, apparently. And, and don't, don't close down nuclear power plants that are known to have effluents, radioactive discharge. Don't look into the Tooth Fairy Project and find out about the kids with strontium in their teeth. More levels higher you go to the nuclear power plant. Instead, instead, 
walk counterclockwise in a circle, wear pink, and if you cover enough miles and enough people do it, this is what I figure anyway, because I'm examining this little phenomena. I'm thinking somehow, some way it cures cancer. That's all I can think. It must cure cancer. And so when I see them walking in circles, counterclockwise, wearing pink, I say, this is amazing. This is phenomenal. This is the sheeple in action. They're gonna, they, they figured it out. They really have. I mean, what a fool I am to think that it's nuclear power plants and, uh, cold era bomb or bomb testing and fires burning through Los Alamos and all sort of stuff being transported around the country and contaminated stuff from Japan and Fukushima and Chernobyl fallout. And, ah, yeah. Instead, that's not it at all. It has something to do with walking in circles and wearing a particular color, right? Nah. Okay, I thought I'd cover that, too, because that just it does not make sense. It does not make sense, right? Okay, that means that at 100 hours, the standard four-day calculation that's used for the protective action guidelines, you would still be at about a tenth of the dose to a child's thyroid. That would cause you to administer potassium iodide or take other action, such as evacuation. Again, at an admission right here that potassium iodide well, must do you some good. It must be why is it with this guy be saying this. Let me back up. Who is this? Can we even tell? Did it let us know? Could be Mr. Castro, but there's a lot of block read action in between here and there, folks. So we'll it very likely is Mr. Castro. And I find him to, you know, I get some of the best information out of Castro who's kind of a little bit more revealing than some of these other characters. Because we're not actually, as far as I understand the measurements we've heard about, we are not we are still at about 10 times below the level that would trigger action under our EPA guidelines. Now, I say big block reaction, half-page reaction, our friends in the Navy. Admiral Donald speaking now. Redacted. This is Kirk Donald. Just one correction on what you said there. The particulate levels that are being measured, the ones reported in the 2 to 7 times 10 to the negative ninth region, those are being taken on the USS George Washington that is currently located in Yokosuka, Japan, which is about 175 miles from the site. Redacted, redacted. Mr. Burroughs. Actually, Admiral, this is Chuck Burroughs. What we saw was the plume, P-L-U-M-E, the plume on its way. Let me say that again. What we saw was the plume on its way. We are still measuring 2 times 10 to the negative ninth at this location, 90 miles from the reactor plant, as well as now measuring 10 to the negative ninth down in the Yokosuka area. The plume is an extensive plume. The plume is an extensive plume. I mean, I have readings at both locations that are above 10 to the negative ninth microcuries per milliliter as far out as Yokosuka and as far in as this 90-mile point. Okay, now we're getting some more serious readings here. We're talking about a plume, an extensive plume. Admiral Donald, okay, so I was half right. There are readings at 90 miles at 2 times 10 to the negative 9. But there are also readings at 170 miles at 2 times 10 to the negative 9. 170 miles and at 90 miles. Male participant, is the weather phenomenon localized to near the base surge or the weather phenomenon consistent along the entire area of the plume? Again, plume. A lot of talk about a plume. For me, if I'm in the Navy, I want you to get me out of there if you're talking about a plume. Sounds pretty serious to me. Let's not take any chances. Let's not. Really, let's not. It's human lives, folks. Human lives. Cancer, horrible way to die. Sickness from cancer, debilitation from cancer, not cool at all. Is the weather phenomenon localized to near the base surge or the weather phenomenon consistent along the entire area of the plume? Admiral Willard. This is Admiral Willard from PATCOM. Pacific Command. If I may input, we've been looking at the forecast and the wind data. The plume right now, as we have seen in the forecast graphics, have previously extended almost due south along the coastline to impact Yokosuka, and they are swinging further to the west, further inland and over metropolitan Tokyo, and to the bases that are further inland and further north and west from Yokosuka. We're basically seeing the plume concentration swing. It's already swung down to the coastline and it's already begun to swing inland. We expect it to remain roughly in that area for the next 24 hours. Again, if you watch my latest video on YouTube pertaining to this Navy ship angst, 
I show you seven or eight screen caps from Plume models found in the FOIA documents that was accessible from TEPCO that they had access to. And it shows the plume 65, 70 kilometers long. It goes south. It goes out to sea. It goes north, northwest. It goes all over the place, but out to sea as well. There's a lot of talk of offshore. If you go in these documents and you're looking at the NRC for your document in the box up top, you type in a particular search term, you can go back and look for these particular things, offshore, plume, that kind of thing. And, and that's what leads you to a better idea of what was you know, going on with the Navy vessels. Don't worry about the numbers per se. I've explained. They know they're being recorded. The redacted stuff is where it was really serious. They don't. If we knew that, if they let that out uh, uh, in the armed forces and the Navy, they'd be up in arms. The midshipmen and women, they they wouldn't play that at all. And they have a right to know. They have a, a right to know. Obama claims to be transparent, but he's the most secretive administration we've ever known. He has classified more documents in his first term than any president we have ever known, ever. He broke that record like he broke all gun sales records. Him and Alex Jones and Piers Morgan, their little psyop, they sure did. They broke all gun sales records, but also the record for classifying top secret national security, or whatever it is, that's what's been going on with this guy. We don't get to find out the, the worst of the worst. We have to extrapolate, and there's still plenty here. And we can know this is the big giant cover. This is the one. Thousands of deaths. There's plenty to, to incriminate people, to put people in jail. Now, I'm not a legal expert. Again, that would be an opinion right there. But kind of interesting that Fast and Furious is what it is. And this is many, many more deaths and a much more provable cover-up in these documents. Names, dates, places, what they knew. A lot can be taken out. Nothing's going on with it. Nothing at all quiet on the Plume Gate front, right? Jesse Ventura says he's all about conspiracies, right? Conspiracy theory with just even true. Well, all conspiracy theories. Maybe you know what? Maybe he's not covering it because it's not even a theory anymore. It just hit me. That would be why Jesse Ventura hasn't touched Plume Gate. And it ain't a theory. It's in the documents and it's provable. So that would be conspiracy fact, conspiracy science. Okay, and that must be why Jesse Ventura, Alex Jones, good buddy. Alex Jones wouldn't really go into the FOIA documents either. Kind of like, hmm, interesting connection there. And Ron Paul didn't either. Uh, Arnie Gunderson, Shill, Gundershill won't go into him. Obama don't talk about him. Bombie didn't talk about him. Wow, come to think about it, not a lot of people's even really plume right here. We're basically seeing the plume concentration swing. It's already swung down to the coastline. It's already begun to swing in. It's swinging all around. Get the ships out. Start loading the soldiers up. Give them Japan back. You know what, folks? I think this is, I know it's, it's kind of sick and crude, but this is a perfect uh, opportunity, if you haven't figured out by now, to give Japan their island back to them and get off of it. I know it's wrecked and it's ruined and like we stayed until the last minute until the place was totally trashed, but hey, that's what I would do anyway. And by the way, I am considering running for president in 2016 to give you an option to Hillary Clinton, who they're going to run in 2016 because she would be the first woman president and they will prey upon that aspect to the sheeple, to the first herd, and they'll all vote. They really will, just like Obama. And if they don't, the d vote machine sure will. And if they don't, the Spanish company <laughs> that's counting them overseas in Spain, uh, they'll make it right. Don't worry, they'll make it right. Male participant. Okay, Dr. Jacksco. Again, this is Greg Jacksco. Look, I just saved this one. Big redaction. Big, uh, you know, you got to wonder. Got to wonder what's in there. Okay, let's probably finish this up and let this be the last frame. Okay, and this is a good one to end on, folks. Again, and, and in this document, there's some incredible stuff. I wasn't even going to do anything today until I opened this one up. I'm like, what? It's, they know all about it. They knew the ships were getting... They knew the right thing to do, whatever your assessment. You will come to the conclusion that, that getting the Navy vessels out of any kind of line of fire from the prevailing winds was the right thing to do. End of story. Radiation is not an enemy that the men and women of the armed forces can draw an M-16 or fire a cannon at. It's not something they can do battle with hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? It, that's not what this is. So in that instance, you pull back realizing this is an opponent of which you do not have the resources or technical capability to fight. You simply cannot. This is an opponent that's coming at you regardless of who you are. Distance does help. I don't deny that. But, hey, we got hit all the way over here hard. You think they got hit around Japan at the time? Think about it. Think about it. 
We got studies that show in 22,000, the first 12 or 14 weeks, can't think which one, 12 or 14, initially, that's how many died. And initially, by the year 2030, 1.3 million. So in and around Japan in the first weeks and, and month or even months preceding the incident, the catastrophe, wow. I can't tell you. It, it, I don't know, but I think it was probably a lot they were exposed to. And we're going to find out in time as latent cancers kick in. Let's look at this last screen capture from page 26. Admiral Willard. Mr. Miller, do you have big block redaction, redacted, redacted, redacted? Yukoska, this is not a one sample phenomenon. We have approximately 35 samples of airborne radioactivity that confirms that it's here. One other comment is we had three other plumes go over us Tuesday and Wednesday. The total dose that we added up for those three plumes over 17 hours was 190 millirem committed dose to the thyroid and 10 millirem effective dose. Okay, again, how accurate are the measurements? I don't know, but here's what we need to concentrate on and, and pay attention to. It wasn't just a one sample phenomenon. They've tested a lot of high samples. He admits it right there. It wasn't just a one sample. 35 samples of airborne radioactivity that confirms it's here. Here, we're where their ships are. We're Yukosuka, where we have a, a, a ship station, apparently, because that's where we're sampling it from the uh, USS George Washington. He says one other comment is we had three other plumes, plural, go over us Tuesday and Wednesday. This is Admiral. Go over us. He's talking about our soldiers and, and, you know, right? Come on. Pretty obvious. The total dose that we added up for those three plumes over 17 hours, so on and so forth. So three plumes, discussion of multiple days of their testing these samples. We know they've been doing worst case scenarios for days plural prior, three, four days prior to the 21st, at the very least. And the 14th when number three went up, folks, seriously, with what I know now, uh, documents aside, everything aside, right then and there, there are no more games. No more games after number three popped and went up on the 14th. You get them all out. You into the headwinds, end of story. And you take your lumps that's over for nuclear power. It's over. Like I say, Patrick Penry has teamed up with Shazam, and nuclear power is coming to an end. It's, it's not only possible, it's absolutely inevitable. There's, it's either that or we're all going to be annihilated eventually. Eventually, it's going to affect every man, woman, and child on the globe. It'll get down into the southern hemisphere, too. There's nuclear reactors in the southern hemisphere. Don't fool yourself. Just a matter of time. They're like dirty bombs. I agree with Jim Stone Freelance. It's a freaking dirty bomb that GE sells you, and they put it in your country. And later, if you piss off the NWO, Remember I told you, General William S. Cohen in 1997, Google it, public information, he said even now they're eco-terrorists remotely setting off volcanoes and earthquakes with electromagnetic waves. But 97, so once you get that nuclear power plant built in your country, you're a fool. And if they don't blow it up, they can cause a tsunami like they did to India in 2004. See, you thought that was all about Indonesia. Well, Indonesia got hit hard. The USS Francisco is the mine layer that's suspected to have laid the tsunami bomb. The real target, I suspect, was in India. Again, it's like the Gifford shooting. It, well, she wasn't the target. It was the federal judge was the target. In this case, it wasn't Indonesia. It was the saltwater intakes in, in India and a number of plants in India. In my searching online, I came across a, a reputable site that talked about that. They had been nearly flooded, and they was a nearly a very serious incident in 2004 with that tsunami with the Indian nuclear power plants. Now fast forward to 2011 and look what happens in Japan with the tsunami and their nuclear plants. I tell you, you coincidence theirs? Are you a coincidence theirs? Because I'm not anymore. And I know that New World Order, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, I don't, really don't care anymore. They do have this technology and it's making them a lot of money. It really is. Just look what the uh, Sandy did. It was engineered all the way. I keep reading about how Home Depot and these companies are selling. Contractors are busy again. People's buying boats, their insurance check. The first quarter was down. The subsequent quarters are up. It's disaster capitalism using a scientific technology, a scientific dictatorship, a corporate corporatocracy, a scientific corporatocracy is running. That's who. That's when they got to saddle with nuclear power, these same guys, right? What are we going to do about it? Educate people. Okay, and by the way, I'm, um, I went back, and I do apologize to Miss Milky. I've, I'm just catching up on stuff, and I uh, mixed a bunch of my 
uh, broadcast that she has on her channel on YouTube. Please sub to Miss Milky the Clown One is her current channel. I guess maybe I'm watching the wrong channel too. So I've got those also on my channel as well, and you can remix those and and pass those around. Am I an expert? No, I tell you, I'm a layman learning as I go along, like everybody is, but. A lot of this is basic comprehension. You don't have to know all the numbers to get a feel for what's really going on and how serious it really was and how many agencies are really involved and how big this thing really should be. It's huge. I, I said when I first looked in these documents, my, look at my mom because my mom's the one that got me started reading them. I said, look, there's like thousands of people need to go to jail. I said, yes, son, yes. You know, so it's it's that big. It is that big. Fast and Furious pales in comparison. Sandy Hook, even if it's a, a hoax, pales in comparison. That's why I look at YouTube and Idaho Picker and Dutch Sense and Tattoo and these other Sheila Aliens and these other quote-unquote big channels. They won't touch it. They won't touch it. So I'm very disappointed, very skeptical when people won't just hit the remix button and put it out there. If you've got that many subscribers, you won't help get the largest conspiracy pro provable now not conjecture, not something to argue and debate about. Gosh, we've had enough documents posted up now. Someone in the DOJ should be issuing indictments. A team should have already been dispatched to pour through these, do a timeline, do a dossier, get all the information, who knew what and when, and then conduct an investigation. On the stand, people will tell you what's redacted in here. On the stand, when threatened with serious time, people will tell you what's redacted on here. They don't want to go to jail. Imagine a Jack Sco or one of these NRC guys going in general population. They ain't going to last. They ain't going to last in there, folks. So they, they'll, they'll be honest when they're on the stand threatened with hard time. Fact. Okay, so that's going to two-hour episode, but we got to get this out there, folks. And there's so many documents and so many pages. It's incredible. It's all good stuff about angst over moving Navy ships. Don't run that worst-case scenario. Y'all just have to take some rads on your nads because we got to protect the nuclear industry at all costs. All right? I'll post up. I'm going to do some more on this. Have a good weekend.